Hey everybody, my name is Brian. Today I'm going to show you a new accessory that I made for my lathe. It's called a vacuum chuck. And we're going to walk through all the pieces that are involved in this vacuum chuck and I'm going to show you how to make your own. And at the end of this video, we're actually going to see it in action. So let's get started. Well starting at the front of it is a piece of one inch MDF. I like to use MDF because it's very flat, it's very stable, and uh, it's actually pretty cheap. Um, sometimes you can even find it as scrap material. If you're going to use plywood, I would suggest using at least two pieces of three quarter inch ply glued together. You want something very rigid, very stable. You don't want any kind of flex in this. Uh, the front of this has a gasket material, and this is actually just craft foam. You can find this at any craft store. I got this piece actually at Michael's. It was in uh, 12 by 18 sheets, so gluing two pieces together, I have a seam right down the middle, but it's a tight seam, so there's very little, if any, air loss. The back of it has a threaded rod. Now, this is a lamp rod uh, used in making a lamp, of course. You can buy this at any hardware store, and uh, it comes in various lengths. This was actually about a 30-inch length when, it, when I started with it. Uh, I had to build a lamp, so this was uh, the remainder of it, so this was kind of a freebie that I had laying around the house. Getting back to the front of it, probably the most important uh, aspect of this whole system is, it, is this right here. This is just simply a radial bearing. Again, you can find it almost any hardware store, but if you look around, certainly you can buy them on the internet or any kind of a, uh, industrial supply place sells them. Now, this bearing had an internal diameter of about 5 eighths. The lamp rod is 3 eighths. Uh, you can certainly get a 3 eighths uh, ID bearing if you'd like, but this is one that I already had laying around, so that's what I used. I simply took a piece of MDF, turned it to fit inside of that, and epoxied it in place. Now, what I did first was I took my rotary tool with a sanding drum and kind of scuffed up the inside surface. I didn't ream it out. I just I just scored some lines in it. Reason being, I didn't want to elongate the hole. I wanted to make sure it still uh, was true when I put the MDF in. So that was epoxied in place. Drilled a hole through that for the lamp rod to go into and threaded that in, epoxied that into place. The whole setup is set into a recess in the MDF. Um, just simply turn the hole into it, set the whole thing down in there. And it's important to do all this work on the lathe. It may be tempting to use a drill press. I would just cannot stress enough, uh, you definitely need to do it on the lathe. That way everything stays centered, okay? Very important here. You'll also note that the bearing is not set flush or below the surface. It's actually raised up just a little bit. And again, that's because this is epoxied into place and I didn't want the epoxy uh, to spill over onto the bearing. I wanted it to, uh, you know, just stay around the ridges here. Okay, so here it is mounted to the lathe. And uh, one thing I didn't point out earlier, but you probably noticed from the backside, was that there was a recess turned into the backside of the MDF. And uh, that's for my chuck. And the way I do it, I actually put the jaws of the chuck inside and expand it outward to, uh, to hold this thing on. Of course, the lamp rod is running straight through the headstock and coming out the back side you can see where the uh, where the lamp rod's coming out and I have a 3 8 uh, ID hose just uh, again any hardware store uh, this is run kinda cold around goes into another piece of MDF turned on the lathe hole drilled through the center epoxied into place now the MDF uh, is not epoxied into this vacuum hose it's just uh, turned with a slight wedge shape so that it fits in there very nice and tightly. And of course this feeds to my shop vac. Uh, about a 12 gallon, two and a quarter horse, you know, nothing, nothing huge. But the good thing about a shop vac is they pull a lot of air. So if your system is not uh, completely sealed up, you know, a vacuum, a uh, shop vac rather, can really compensate for that. So it can, it can keep up with the loss of airflow. Another good thing that a shot vac offers is your capacity down here, your, in my case, 12 gallons here. That is like a reservoir of vacuum, if you will. So if you are turning something and you lose power, you have that vacuum in there that will 
allow you to get the the piece off without it just flying off so you have a few extra seconds to to catch the piece in the event of a power power failure so as you can see again we had a little bit of a safety barrier in the event of a power failure that uh, the piece is not just going to come flying out. That's a problem you could run into if you have just a vacuum pump. They do draw a lot of vacuum, but there is no tank. Now, of course, you could uh, install a tank of some sort, but you know most people already have a shop vac, so this is a pretty good system. Um, and uh, of course, you can always upgrade later. Uh, you will note uh, some circles here, and of course, that's just to help you line up the piece. Now, if you were turning a bowl from uh, from scratch and you knew in the end you were going to vacuum chuck it to clean up the bottom, you would want to, uh, in, in the turning process, leave a dimple or something right here. And that way you can use your tailstock to center it, slide your tailstock forward, and that will, uh, you know, center the piece on your on your vacuum chuck here. Um, but the circles never hurt, never hurt uh, especially if you ever want to go back and, uh, and do a piece that you've already finished, like this one. Well, there you go. That's the uh, system that I use. Uh, it works pretty well, as you can see. And uh, the only other thing I really want to say is, of course, be safe. You know, every time we come out to the shop, there are dangers, and this is no different. Um, so just be safe. Use common sense. Don't go too fast with it. I will spin it at 400 RPM. Uh, I've had it up to 600, again, with no problem. But if you're just cleaning up the bottom, there's really no need to turn any higher than that. You know, take very light cuts, use sharp tools, do your sanding, and you really shouldn't have to, uh, to speed it up to, you know, a very high speed. So again, be safe, have fun. Um, I hope everyone understands how this works. Uh, if not, you know, I'll try and, try and watch the comments and try and answer anything that I can about it. And of course, this is just the system that works for me. You know, there are tons of modifications that you can do to suit your needs. This is just what I use. And, uh, you know, again, if, if you have a better idea or you have a comment, please post it so that everyone, you know, can, can learn from this, including me. So, thanks for watching.